Hey everyone, welcome to the retro room. I thought it would be time to show you uh, some of my Betamax machines again and what I've got playing tonight. <sighs> Excuse me. So, first of all, and most importantly, my first machine that I have, and I've had it for a number of years now, is the SLHF950. And that's a um, beautiful machine with the skate load feature. Absolutely love it. And um, I've had it for a number of years now. I got it for $150. If I wanted to buy one now, if I could find one, they'd probably be going for about a grand if they're in really good nick like this one. This has got brand new heads in it. Um, it had some issues in the recent years where um, I'd leave the machines on, plugged in, turned on, and to keep the caps warm, the capacitors warm, so they wouldn't, the power wouldn't die off and just shut off and just wouldn't run anymore. So I'd just leave them on. Um, I found that the machine was getting quite hot just sitting there for days and days and days. And then the video signal started being an issue when I'd play a tape and all I had was this bright yellow, red and sort of horrible waves on the screen. And I don't know why. I had a guy called Noel from Beta Heaven in Victoria fix it for me, who's fixed my machines over many years. He's only a Sony guy. He won't fix anything else. He won't sell anything else but Sony. So my Sonyos, I couldn't get him to fix them when I had those. But um, I really love this thing. It's, um, as I said, I, only got it for, I got it for $150. They'll probably go for 1000 bucks now these days um, in Australia. There's only so many of them that they made, I believe. I'm not sure how many, but they're quite popular in Europe as well. And I absolutely love it. So that's one. That's my favorite. My second favorite is the, um, what's running right now. It's actually playing Crocodile Dundee, the original. And this is the Sony SLHF 100E, so it's a European model. Um, the Australian released ones had AS on the end of it, and uh, so this is a European model. And um, it's an absolute gem. I love the way when you do that, the flaps move back, uh, backwards and down and up. It's freaking awesome. A really good machine. I put had brand new heads put in it. Um, I bought it for four hundred dollars from Peter Heaven, and. Um, it's had an issue with it one week after I got it. He was over in Adelaide and fixed it for me. And uh, it's been running like a dream ever since. And I just absolutely love it. It's a beautiful machine. And once, uh, f finally, the oldest machine I have in here as far as Betamax is the Sony SL-C6AS. This is the world's first front-loading VCR of any video format. And the video heads on this thing are so shot that the picture that you see when you put a tape in and, and run it is green. So the heads are shot. So I'm just using it as a rewinder. If I put the tape straight in and it loads it, it goes to load it, the reel tables won't turn, so the tape film won't be moved around. All I've got to do though is take these off, um, put the tape in, wait for it to load it in, and then I'll just got to get the little plastic, there's a plastic reel that goes around like this and if I just flick it, it'll turn then turn it over it just doesn't seem to have enough power for it to do it itself so that's my rewinder and um, yeah, it's a, it's a really old machine, it's from 1982 I believe and it was, um, actually I think it's actually earlier than that maybe 81 or 82, I think uh, I know I had a C9 as well at one point. I love those too, but compared to the Sony HF series, no comparison on picture quality in my view. Um, but I still like the C9s. I had one, um, and it eventually died, and that was that. But so far, hopefully these Sonys keep going, and um, they just keep going well for years and years and years. The oldest machine that I have in here that's video is actually this, uh, the bottom down here is a Philips N1500 VCR format machine from 1972. This, the heads on these originally would only last 50 hours on the first version. The N1502 I think it was that came out next, uh, they would run, the heads would last probably hundreds and hundreds of hours. Very heavy machine. Uh, has loads of square tape and um, 
I may never get this thing running. I don't have a single tape for it. But like the Sansui amplifier here, it's a nice little museum piece to remember the, good, the, the old days of video. This came out the same time that the Cartravision came out as well in the US. So, not sure which one's better than the other. Um, but definitely, um, yeah, a really, really old machine. One year older than I am. So, that's about it for Betamax at the moment. Um, I just love these machines. Absolutely just love them. And the fact that I can, st I still do watch Betamax and VHS tapes. Not very often, but I do. Because I just really, really enjoy, you know, just putting in old tapes and seeing how the old videos looked. The picture quality is no match for today's technology. But you know what? There's something about watching an old piece of film on tape. You know? Like if I put Enter the Dragon, which is down here, if I put this on, the colour is so washed out and it's so dull. Um, but you know what? I get something from watching an old 4.3, you know, pan and scan print of a cinema movie that's got no rich contrast at all. The colours are all washed out, but I still enjoy it. I don't know why, but I do. I just like it. I like, I don't like grain in a film, but I do like differences in picture quality and just how the technology's changed over the years and being able to go back and watch an old film and see how they look. You know, there's something about film on tape that I like. Call me strange, but that's how it is. I've kept a few little little artifacts here from the golden era of home video, like this TDK video cassette uh, blank tape, um, which was eight dollars thirteen back in the day. And I've always liked TDK; they really are good. Japanese stuff was good. Um, also got a brand new Sony Betamax HL750 um, which I'll never open love the packaging of these gorgeous things I've got a couple of head cleaners as well um, what have we got here this is a uh, Maxell tape or something I'm not sure it's a Sony one another Sony tape so yeah there we go that's uh, and a lot of the tapes that are on this shelf the shelving here some of the best ones are Betamax, especially some of those road shows up there. Uh, Horror Hospital, um, what else we got? Alone in the Dark. What a great cover art that is. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you've got any advice or things you'd like me to, to show you from my Betamax collection, which I have massively downsized as far as movie tapes, um, I used to have 3,500 tapes in here at one point that were all. X, all bar 1,000 of them were X rentals or RX rentals, but I've sold a lot of them because the market for it has gone pretty big over the last few years, and I've sold a lot of tapes because I just I wanted to display my best tapes face out, and I thought you know what, whatever I've never watched in here, whatever I feel like I'm never going to watch, I'm going to sell, and that's what I've done. And this and this here over there represents the last of my once massive video collection. Will I sell more? No. This is it. This is my treasure trove of the golden era of home video from the 70s and 80s. And I'll always keep it. And uh, whatever you guys have got out there, show me. Love to see the photos. And um, take care. Thanks for watching.